What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be tackling a algorithm style interview question that you might commonly see at Fang type companies, the Googles and the Amazons and Apples of the world. Before we get into things, hit that like button down below for me posting a video more than a month later. I've been very busy traveling. I was in Portugal and other places as well, but we're back at it. So let's get into it. So I've got Xcode here. We're going to be working in a playground. I'll start by explaining the question here, and then we're going to work through a solution together and discuss some trade-offs. So let me call this three largest numbers since that is relevant to our question. And we'll create this here. I'll just bump up the font size and we'll get into things. Uh, just to call out, I'm using Xcode 14.3 since the beta in 15, beta 5 was giving me issues in Playground. So just an FYI. So cool, what is our question? So today our question is, given a array, return the three largest numbers in that array in ascending order. So we're just gonna write that out. Given an array, return three largest numbers in ascending order. So pretty simple question at first glance. And the caveat is the array you're given is not sorted, otherwise this would be very easy. Um, and you obviously aren't supposed to, in this question, just call dot sort, right? Because dot sort itself kind of implies cheating in the question. And also sorting is a uh, non-zero uh, runtime operation. You're incurring some time complexity by just sorting up front. So the idea is to do this without sorting and given a sorted input. So let's create a function. And this is going to say three largest numbers. Of course, we're going to have an input. Uh, let's call it a array, an array of integers, and we're going to return an array of integers. And this should have three numbers, like I said, three largest, basically. So cool. Let's um, let's just do return uh, an empty array, and let's talk about how we might go about tackling this. So. We probably want to check some edge cases, you know, in an interview setting, you might want to ask like, hey, like, will this ever be empty? Will I ever have negative numbers? Not that that will, um, you know, uh, affect our solution. It'll work with that as well, but it's still pretty good to call out. So I'll just go ahead and say, you know, if our array here uh, is indeed empty, we'll just exit early and return a empty array like so. Otherwise, what we want to do is we want to probably start by initializing our result array, right? We know our result array is going to have a max capacity of three. So we can maybe say result here is going to be a array. And we are essentially going to be repeating. Let's see if I can find what I'm looking for. Yep, repeating. We could do int dot min and it's going to be a count of three. So for those of you who haven't seen this initializer for arrays, uh, it essentially will just put negative one or rather uh, infinite for the minimum value of a integer uh, in a array at three positions. Um, you could do negative one as well, but that doesn't work if you have a input with negative elements. So cool, now what do we need to do next? Well, obviously we'll want to return this after we put some values in here. And now we wanna to get to the meat of this question, which is how do we put values in here such a way that we're accounting for kind of sorting, even though the input isn't sorted. So what I like to do is I like to create some auxiliary functions. In this case, we'll just have one because if we try to do everything here in line, it gets a little messy. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna create a function called rearrange. And we're gonna give a input of a single number. And we're also gonna say our result we're gonna pass in will be in out uh, array integer. And essentially we'll be able to pass an immutable copy of our uh, result. Well, our not a copy, I should say the result itself. Therefore we can mutate it and do all of our fancy adjustments in here. And back in this function, we'll just loop over for number or for num in array. And we will just call rearrange rearrange and for some reason this does not want to cooperate with me today so let's try and see if autocomplete wants to get its life together uh, if not let me just open up xcode again because autocomplete certainly does help especially when you're trying to reason through the question instead of trying to wrestle with uh, xcode here so rearrange and i guess i'll just manually type it out at this point so our number will be num and our result will be and result. 
So let me just go ahead and call this uh, function here. So we'll say results will be three largest numbers. I just wanna make sure I don't have a weird syntactical typo in here. This takes in a array and let's just print out result because I feel like my playground is being wonky and I wanna make sure that I am not making silly typos. So bear with me here. All right, cool, no typos, we're getting an empty array. So anyways, back to this. We are looping over every number in array and we're calling this rearrange function, passing in that number at that position and our result, uh, we're passing it, therefore we can mutate it. Now, this should obviously imply that we're already at an O of N runtime since we're gonna loop over the entire input array. There's no way to get around this. You need to process the whole array to find out what the three largest numbers are. Now, let's work on this. So in here, the first thing we're gonna define is our, uh, let's do to be inserted idx so bear with me here and i'll explain this we essentially want to find the id where uh, we will be inserting the largest number assuming this number is one of the larger ones found and the way we do this is pretty simple we just compare this value to every position in our results array since we only at max have three values in there and when we start the values in there are int dot min so we're gonna do it um, from the back of the array to the front. So what that means is we're gonna say if number is greater than our result at two, do something. And we're just gonna do an else if all the way down to zero. So this will be index one and this will be index zero. Let's adjust these. And if we find that this number that we're passing in is not greater than any of these three positions, we can basically just return and just exit this function because there's nothing left for us to do essentially in here, right? Which this implies that whatever number we're now processing is less than what's in our result array. Therefore, you know, no reason to continue. In this case, we're just gonna be reassigning the index position, right? So this will be one since the thing, the number that we're processing is greater uh, than the element at that index. So we'll just do that respectively. So two, one, and zero. Cool. Now what we wanna do is we wanna perform some, what I like to call shifts or swaps as some folks like to call them. So now that we know that we found an index uh, that we want to put this number at uh, because this number is greater than the thing in our result at that index, we wanna basically shift everything back one because this number is larger. And the way we do that is as follows. We're gonna first define a current index, and this is the same thing as to be inserted. And what we'll do is we'll do a while loop, and we'll say while current is greater than zero, we wanna do some stuff. And what we'll do is we'll say temp is going to be from our result array, get the thing at current minus one, and what we'll do is we will be putting in here at current, rather at results for current minus one, we're gonna put in here the thing at results and the element at to be inserted. Now bear with me and we'll talk through this in a moment because it gets a little wonky. We are going to then decrement current. We're gonna move that pointer for our uh, while loop here back one because we eventually wanna get to zero so we can break out of the loop. And now what we're going to do is we are going to say in our results at the to be inserted, we're gonna to toss in temp. So we're basically doing a shift here. And finally, before we finish this function, what we want to do is we wanna actually assign number. So we're gonna say results at the to be inserted uh, index, we're gonna say is now number. So this while loop throws off people quite a bit. I know it's a little wonky and it takes a little bit of staring at and mentally reasoning with examples to figure out. So let's talk through it a little bit. So the first part I would classify as rather simple. We're saying, okay, the number that we're passing in, find if it meets the uh, criteria of being larger than the thing at the third position, second position, or first position, right? If it does, we're just gonna hang on to that index. Otherwise, we'll just exit. Then what we wanna do is we're gonna say current, which is basically current uh, index. So let me actually make this current IDX because I think it's a little easier to read that way. We're gonna say that current is the to be inserted IDX. 
And we're going to say, well, current is greater than zero, that current ID. Get the element in our result at that position, subtracting one, right? And the reason we subtract one is because we know that the number that we've passed in is greater than the element at that index. So we only need to shift everything behind it backwards. Then what we'll do is we'll basically do that shift. We'll say at current IDX minus one, assign the thing it to be inserted, right? Because for example, right, let's say this the number that we passed in is 12, right? And let's say this element is 11. We don't wanna basically trash 11, we wanna hang on to it, we wanna shift it backwards, right? So that's what this is doing. Then we'll just decrement current IDX so we can move uh, backwards in the results array. And then in results array, we'll basically put in temp, which is a thing that we're bumping out. Finally, what we'll do is uh, in our result at to be inserted IDX, we'll toss in the number. And uh, let's see, I may have mixed current IDX here. I don't believe I have, let me just double check. Uh, but our, our results when we do a test case will be the final tell for us. So this is essentially how this works. We're doing a shift here, and I like to comment this basically here. So shifting result backwards, and then here what we're doing is we're saying determine um, largest number uh, valid criteria. Alrighty. So let's actually do a test case and let's make sure this works and that I don't have a bug. And if we do have a bug, we're gonna debug it together. I'm not a fan of cutting the video and trying to fix my stuff on the side. We're gonna see me make mistakes in real time. So here, let's pass in a test case uh, array and I'm just gonna create this up here. We'll say our test case array. Let's do something simple first. We'll say one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven. And let me just mix it up a little bit. We'll do eight. 9, 12, and maybe like 32. So from this, I see 32 is the largest, um, less than that is 12, and less than that is 9. So I expect to see 9, 12, 32. So let me pause the playground here and give it a run once more, and boom, we have 9, 12, and 32. So we are pretty good. We are definitely working here. Let's give a more uh, creative example. So let's do some random numbers here uh, as I make these up as I go along. We'll do 91, 94, maybe we'll do 101, maybe we'll do, I don't know, 17, like 103, and let's see what we get here. We I think 103 is the largest in this case. We have 101, 103, and 122, which looks to be correct. 122 is the largest, less than that is 103, less than that is 101. So let's talk about uh, runtime and space time complexity, pretty important for these types of questions. So for time complexity, we are O of N, and this is kind of what I mentioned before, where N is the input array, where N is input, and it's important to specify what the heck N is, because a lot of folks will just say, hey, well, this is O of N, since you know it's linear based on our input, but they never say the latter of that. Uh, pretty important to specify what your, uh, you know, variables are in your uh, big O notation. And in space time, well, if you think about it, we're actually using constant space. Uh, we are using this result array, definitely, and we have a loop over our uh, input, but we're never scaling the space that we need to use um, given the input, right? We have to loop over it, but it's constant based on that. So the there's no auxiliary space being used. We use an ID here for the index. We're using this current pointer for this index. So it is reasonable to say that the space here is uh, O of one uh, for our auxiliary structure. So that is basically the runtime and space time complexity. And this is a pretty good overview of the question that um, you can expect to see in some interviews. Let's do a brief recap and then I will uh, stop my spiel and we'll wrap it up there. So we start by handling our edge cases um, we then allocate a result array with the capacity of three, which is a nice little optimization. Uh, and we say that they're all int.min here to start off with. We loop over every number in array and we call this auxiliary function rearrange, passing in the number in our running results. In here, we determine the criteria uh, ID basically, where we wanna put that number if it's larger than anything in our result array. Thereafter, we do a while loop with that given index and we basically swap or shift all the values in our result array back 
as we decrement the current ID. And finally, since that number did meet one of the criteria up here because we didn't exit, we of course want to put that at the to be inserted IDX. And one thing that I will note here is um, one issue or one uh, problem I've seen folks do is instead of assigning this uh, to be inserted to current, they'll just do this and they'll basically get rid of this. And this works for the swapping, but there's actually a critical flaw here. Um, this actually, this actually does not work for the uh, swapping, I should say. But what folks think is, well, hey, I need to start here and shift. But because this is the element being decremented, presumably you would put this here. This throws off all of your indices right here and here and here. So just be very mindful of the fact that you do need a copy of this index because current is indeed different than this to be inserted IDX because current is what you're going to be decrementing. So hopefully that was clear. Let me know in the comments down below if any of this was confusing. Do my best to help you guys out. Um, if you haven't liked the video already, make sure to do so for the YouTube algorithm. We just crossed 95,000 subs, which is really awesome. On our way to 100,000. Uh, follow on LinkedIn, connect on Twitter, or I guess X or whatever Elon is calling it these days. Always love hearing from you guys. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.